Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, welcome back to Giga Texas. It's Monday, the 3rd of October, 2022. And it's not just the start of a new week, it's also the start of the fourth quarter. And we're expecting a lot of very big things this quarter for Tesla and here at Giga Texas. Before I begin with what's going on here at Giga Texas, I want to extend my personal congratulations to Firefly Aerospace for their highly successful launch of their Alpha rocket on Saturday morning. Now, not only did they achieve an excellent launch and liftoff, but they also got to orbit and deployed all of their satellites, a smashing success. Now, why is this important to me? Well, one of my best friends, my Air Force Academy classmate, Anne, who also was one of the initial employees for SpaceX and was highlighted in Eric Berger's book, Liftoff. And I would recommend you take a look at that to learn a little bit more about Anne. But now she works for Firefly. She was the launch director for this mission. And I can't be more happy for what Anne achieved, what Firefly achieved, and what the entire team did as well. So congratulations to Firefly and of course my friend Anne for that great success. Now here at Giga Texas, as always, a lot of activity going on. Two areas I want to highlight this morning. On the south end, one of the developments is the movement of steel from that south material storage location just south of the, the uh, pond. It's being moved over to the east side where they used to have the trailers. In my previous video, we saw that they had cleared that uh, material storage lot out. Now, they're moving a lot of the materials. They took, part, took apart one of the workshops on the south end as well, and more steel is being delivered. At the same time, that south concrete lot is continuing to see concrete demolition and excavation work, particularly on the west side, but two large saw cut sections on the middle and the east side as well, kind of hinting that we're gonna see an expansion of the demolition work back there. So a lot of very interesting developments that we'll have to keep an eye on. The other one that I wanna talk about is up at the north end at the electrical substation. Now, we see continued progress on the actual graded construction site with a lot of detail. And I've got some information about some of the uh, items that we'll see in the video, particularly the structure that they're uh, assembling. And it's gonna be a control room. And I'll have a little bit more information to talk about that a little later. But as you can see by these images, quite a bit of progress, quite a bit of activity going on in that main graded area, which is great to see. So I hope that you enjoy the video and all the information I'll present within the video. And again, thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. I hope you have a great week. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Starting off this morning on the east side of the factory and approaching the secondary entrance here on the east side, as you can see. Now one of the things I want to show you is in the lower right hand corner of the video, you can see three new loading or receiving docks that have been cut into the wall and are being configured. This adds to the total number now up to 131 receiving docks in the entire factory. So it seems like Tesla is continuing to make some plan changes and adding additional cargo loading and receiving capability to the factory. As we continue the flight over the roof of the body and white section, you can see all of the solar panels at the bottom of the screen preparing for installation. And there's several other sections on the roof as well. So we may see more solar panels being installed soon. 
Here on the upper left hand corner you can see some more of the duct work that is being temporarily stored. I believe it's going to be added onto this frame-like structure on the section of roof here over the body in white that has been recently removed and is being reconfigured. Underneath here is several HVAC uh, equipment that was installed previously, but it looks like now it's being prepared for uh, operation soon. And this will help with more of the factory with internal uh, heating and ventilation. We can also see just how some of the solar panels appear on this section of the roof as we prepare to get to the uh, west side of the factory. And of course, you can see more of the solar panels here getting ready for uh, future installation. So let's take a trip on the west side of the General Assembly and head towards the south and see some new developments today. As we approach the main entrance, we'll first start with this uh, landscaping that is being put in around where this uh, wall was installed into the berm. You can see quite a few more of the trees have been installed on sort of the west side of that wall, and there's quite a bit more in that uh, sort of the clearing with all of the vegetation uh, still waiting for the installation for the landscaping, but they are making a significant progress, and I'll be interested to see what this looks like when it's completed. Now as we face the main doors, you can see again, they still have the uh, temporary ramps. The doors are covered in that white and red for protection. And just inside, there's more construction going on to reconfigure this main entrance, uh, even more than what uh, we saw on the inside at the last shareholders meeting. So at the next shareholders meeting, maybe we'll get a chance to see how that uh, section has transformed. As we continue to more to the south, you can see how all of these receiving docks have uh, quite a few trailers. There's a few here on the left-hand side that are waiting for more trucks to arrive and the ramps that are used to load and unload the trucks uh, on the ramp as well. And you can see, again, quite a few of the trailers attached to this section of the building. And this inside is where General Assembly Lines 2 and 3 are be continue to be fitted out and constructed. These seven doors have all of the uh, uh, load levelers either installed or the frames installed, so we should see uh, this section completed fairly soon. As we wrap around the southwest section of the building, we can see that the demolition and removal of the concrete apron in this particular western section continues. The truck is being loaded up and later on in the video we'll see where they are transporting all of the broken up concrete. It's over to the far east side. So I'm going to fly over the pond. I want to show you some of the changes in the south steel material staging location. What we see is some of the steel that has been stored here has been now moved further to the east in the section where there were trailers. Also, where that uh, truck with the flashing lights are, the workshop that used to be here has now been disassembled and removed. So it continues to have some changes here. And as we can see, some of the steel work is uh, uh, being put around where this platform is. And then also in this uh, staging location, you can see quite a bit more of the steel work uh, on the far end where the uh, man lift, uh, the blue man lift is uh, moving around. You can also just see that uh, without the trailers here, uh, they are now starting to use this for material storage. So that may indicate uh, continued uh, potential for construction on this ramp where they are uh, preparing to uh, remove more of the concrete. And here on the left-hand side of the screen in this sort of the L pattern is one of the sections that they have been doing saw cuts into the concrete as part of the preparation work for the demolition. Now, there's still quite a bit of model wise here. These generally have been here for a little bit of time. I'm not sure what is the situation with these particular model wise, but Tesla seems to be waiting for these uh, until they start delivering them. Maybe they're waiting for some parts, or, or maybe these are 4680 variants and they're waiting for uh, some of the batteries. I'm really not sure, but it's interesting that these continue to be here. 
on this south loading platform into the General Assembly, we can see more materials being delivered on these trucks wrapped in that green clear plastic and being hoisted up onto the platform and then in inside. I believe this is all part of the production equipment that's being installed in support of that General Assembly lines two and three in that particular section. In this corner of the building next to the stamping machine, you can see all these uh, components in the green, white, and blue, and also the crates off to the right. These are AIDA uh, components for a very large machine that's uh, either a stamping machine or a metal forming machine, uh, similar to the large Schuler presses and another AIDA press that was installed in stamping machine uh, structure. And I believe this will be moved into the stamping machine uh, extension with those two doors at the south end of the factory. And once uh, they start moving them inside, we know that they're getting close to having that machinery uh, completed. Now let's head across the river to the far southeast just to take a look at uh, the last bits of the horizontal drilling operation and the pipes that were pulled underneath the Colorado River. So right here where all the power lines are located, this is where the three large pipes were uh, assembled and prepared for pull underneath the Colorado River. And you can see a few of the remaining pieces right here at the bottom of the screen. And where that excavator is working is where the three pipes entered the bore on this side of the Colorado River and traveled in the general path that we are flying the drone down underneath the Colorado River and then exiting where the drill used to be located right next to this yellow excavator. And uh, as you can see, they've moved the drills and all of the supporting equipment away from here, signaling that the horizontal drilling operation for this phase of construction is completed. I'll also give you a closer look at the material storage that is being created here. This is where the trailers were temporarily located for a while. In the last video, we saw that they had been removed. And here is a pretty good view of all of the various steel parts and construction equipment that has been moved to this particular section. Again, this is close to the south concrete lot that is having the concrete demolished and then removed. So this could be related, again, to some sort of construction in that particular section. I'll pull the drone away a little bit to show you this material staging location. And this also used to have a lot of the Warehouse on Wheels trailers temporarily located here while that expansion work was going on. Now we see some of this drilling. This is core sample drilling to test and determine the strength of the soil. Usually this is done when something is about to be constructed. And in the previous video, they were doing core samples a little bit towards the top of the screen. So obviously this is an area that they are preparing for some sort of construction, and I'm curious to find out what that will be. Now this clearing has a lot of the dirt being stockpiled yet again, and they've used this in the past as temporary storage until the next phase of construction begins, and I think that's what we're gonna see again. The Warehouse on Wheels yard continues to expand further to the south, and more and more trailers are being added and you can kind of see how the trailers are extending to the south. As we continue to move to the southeast, I'll just give you a view of how the material storage equipment and trailers, also some of the workshops are continuing to be built up and moved to this particular location. And this frees up more space further to the north for construction.
I'll bring the drone in here next to the warehouse on wheels yard to show you a few things. One, at the bottom of the screen, you can see these large steel columns. Now we know that these are columns because you can see the mounts that would be attached to the footings. I'm not sure again why we're seeing this steel develop here, but it is an interesting development. And these are some of the first of the columns that we've seen in addition to all the other steel components, particularly on the south end, which tend to be mostly beams. So this is something worth monitoring. You can also see in the distance, there's another section of the warehouse on wheels yard location that is getting some earthwork. So we may see a further expansion as well. Now this hill is where the trucks bringing the broken up concrete from the south end are unloading. And then they use this hill as part of the uh, reclamation effort to recycle a lot of that concrete. Now we're at the part of the construction site that has reported that uh, a boring machine tunnel may be initiated near where these uh, uh, workshops are at the bottom of the screen. Also, this is just another view of this uh, trailer with a lot of the cooling systems installed onto this uh, uh, temporary platform. You can also see crews preparing sort of the edge of this section and possibly preparing for some, uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to be concrete, but some other material to make that uh, uh, more usable. Here you see at the bottom of the screen a fence is now being erected around the battery cathode plant and you can also see some blue pipes. Uh, these are water pipes uh, being brought in for installation, so more utilities. The number of wall panels that are being installed continues to grow as well. Uh, here you can see four of the wider wall panels getting ready for installation and one being installed at the ground level right now. If you look at the upper left, you can see they have that thin wall panel at the uh, near the top and that allows it to space the larger wall panel on the top so that it overlaps the top of the roof by about uh, three feet or about one meter and that will form the transition point between the uh, roof and the walls and it will be sealed off for uh, protection from the weather. As we continue moving more towards the north, I'll show you that they are now resuming work on these three deep foundations. And on the one on the left, it looks like they are starting to install that yellow moisture barrier again, which kind of signals that they've reached the new depth for those foundations. And maybe we'll see some concrete um, after the rebar is installed soon, maybe by the end of the week. This large section that was being poured in my previous video is now completed. You can also see at the bottom the yellow forms are being removed from the perimeter grade beam as it has been poured at least to this point. So that uh, will form the basis of the walls and is more progress on that portion of the construction site. So I'm going to reposition the drone over the roof onto the western side and we'll take a look at the activity over here. The two temporary platforms on the left-hand side continue to be used to maneuver and uh, move a lot of these uh, materials up into those floors for continued construction. Now this section here shows crews laying rebar amongst the formwork for a large concrete section and with all of the risers for electrical and plumbing, again it looks like this may be a tank farm and we'll continue to monitor that to see if they move the tanks from the far west side across the highway here at some point in the future. I'll pan the drone to the west just to show you the progress on this new clearing that is being prepared. And this has had a lot of work over the last uh, week to remove trees and some of the hilly terrain and to flatten it out. And you can see that uh, dump trucks are bringing more dirt, most likely from the north of the battery cathode plant down here to uh, prepare this section for uh, leveling out the grade and uh, making sure that it's uh, ready for either being a parking lot or maybe material storage. On the south end, we can see wall panel installation is continuing. They're working on that upper left-hand section now with some smaller wall panels to finish that out. And then there's that large section right in the middle. 
uh, the upper floors, and I'm kind of curious to see what they end up doing uh, to finish that out. This is a good view of the west, uh, the east side of the building with all the materials being staged, and this uh, continues to grow out. Um, you can also see there's a rectangular uh, excavation work going on at the northeast corner, and also generally how this land clearing is appearing today and uh, also filling in some of the ponds and removing some of the hills off to the left-hand side of the screen. So let's prepare for a flight over to the electrical substation and see what is going on over there this morning. The progress at the electrical substation construction site is hitting another gear and there's quite a bit of activity. So I'll give you again a overview of what this looks like and then we'll do a detailed look at several of the construction projects going on all at the same time. Now on the north end you can see these two circular mounts. These are for the steel power poles that will eventually be installed here and help with the reconfiguration of the power lines. And this is a good view here. You can see the circular ring of mounts that uh, the bolts will attach the pipes. Where we're approaching now is where crews have been making rebar cages, kind of a circular long cage. These go down into the bores that are drilled and it provides the support necessary for the footings uh, that you can see in the upper middle part of the screen and we'll get a closer view of that. What those footings and the rebar cages are to support are poles very much like these and I'll give you a closer look. What's interesting is the mounts at least on some of them appear to be angled so we may see some of these poles that uh, don't go straight vertical but they are mounted in such a way that they have some angularity to them. So it'll be interesting to watch. There's more of the poles on the left hand side of the screen just going out of view as well. Now this large section of footings, uh, some of which are still under construction, you can see the formworks have been installed over the last uh, 48 to 72 hours. And this is a close view of even more of them being installed right now. Now the crews are putting the forms around where those rebar cages are into the bores. And what this does is it uh, provides a location for the concrete to hold the actual mounts for which these poles are going to be attached. I'm going to move the drone over here towards this steel structure. And I'd like to go over a little bit of information about this structure based on some inputs that I received from Ro Herms on YouTube. You can see this, he says this is an electrical yard control house and the utilities will be run on the ground level rather than under the ground so that it prevents any problems with uh, electrical current and the underground grid. So thank you very much for that information. This is the two new excavations that eventually we will probably see some rebar and then concrete. And then I would expect to see this continue to grow across the graded site. As I pull back, you will give you a view of the entire construction site. I also wanna show you the re water retention pond right in the middle on the left and the right, you can see the newly created inlets. And also under the road, you can see this uh, concrete pipe that was installed to help drain the water detention pond as well. So overall, as you can see, there's quite a bit of activity going on at this particular construction site, and the changes are continuing at a very rapid pace uh, on a daily basis. I'll give you a closer look at some of the materials being stored here for the construction, and you can see some of the racks near the drone, some of the electrical components off to the left, and you can compare the size of the new ones to the a currently installed temporary uh, electrical substation. And there's a marked difference. It's going to be much more capable. This is another shot of the clearing and possibly a new, uh, either a parking lot or maybe a construction site. I'm going to continue to monitor this as well. This view is very good because it gives you just a sense of the number of cars and vehicles parked in the east parking lot and the uh, amount of contracted workers and Tesla employees is very evident here with this view. 
Now, here's an interesting uh, development I want to show you is this is the new car staging and transportation lot. And as you can see, it's almost empty. There's a few Model Ys in the lower left, uh, but it looks like they were all cleaned out as far as the end of the third quarter and now preparing for the fourth quarter. So we'll see how Tesla and Giga Texas uh, prepares for uh, this quarter now that we're into a new one. This is a closer view of the three new receiving docks that have been cut into the walls. Again, this is part of a continuing trend with Giga Texas of uh, expanding the number of receiving docks. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this brings the total number to about 131 in the main building. As I reposition the drone and pan back to the north, I'll give you a good view of the castings that have been constructed and stored here on the outside of the casting machine structure. Uh, some of the racks have the castings mounted and then some of them are empty. Uh, this is uh, another uh, interesting thing to monitor as the number of castings continues to ebb and flow as they manufacture more and then they're moved into the body, white for con body in white for construction of Model Y bodies. I'll drop the drone down here to show you the continued plumbing work that is going on between the road and the parking space. And I'll fly along the length of it heading towards the west so you can get an idea of how this continues to transform. Now what we see is that many of the excavations on this section have been completed and now they have been filling them in with uh, more of a gravel kind of mixture right down the middle. Looks like there's a trench that's being uh, excavated at this point in time, so we'll probably see more plumbing being installed here. And you can see that sort of a manifold towards the top of the screen of how that is starting to take shape as well. Now at the north end of the paint shop, there's a lot of activity with the cranes moving materials up onto the platforms. But one of the things that you notice is that the number of green wrapped components continues to shrink as more and more are being moved inside. You can see the fencing has been uh, reshaped as well. And on the left hand side on the dumpster, you can see some of that green wrapping that uh, is, uh, has been removed from these components as they've been moved inside. There's a lot of deliveries here of these wood crates. Uh, you can see some on the platform, some on the truck right in front of the drone. I'll try to give you a view, a uh, closer view inside. You can see how these appear. I, I do not know what they are moving in, but uh, the crane is moving in some of the red scaffolding or racking, as you can see and that's going up to the second floor of the paint shop. So again, continues to have a lot of this new componentry, the modular paint system being installed. And the rate that they're going is we may see all of this moved in to the factory uh, probably by the end of this week at the pace they're going. So let's go up onto the roof. I'll show you just a close up view of the Northwest corner. You can see they're continuing to work on the enclosures they have part of the sixth one from the uh, bottom completed and pre preparing for the seventh and final one. So that's a view of what was going on here at Giga Texas today on a very busy Monday. I hope that you enjoyed the views, the discussion, and uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great day.